We hear all the time that chronic inflammation is really bad for our body, and it leads to major health consequences like autoimmune disorders, heart disease, cancer, insulin resistance, obesity, the list goes on. Now, the truth is that a lot of people really don't know what this inflammation thing is in the body that we're talking about. And then the bigger question is, well, how do you actually turn this off so that you can live a healthier life and avoid all these health problems? And that's what we'll discuss in this video. So stick around to the end as I lay out the details. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski, and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join our notification community so I can help you excel your health and your life. Now, I also want to mention at the time of the release of this video, my Precision One on One Health Consulting Program is open. Now, this Precision Nutrition Program is for helping people get to the root cause of their problems. If you're somebody who is tired of the traditional system of healthcare out there and you're looking to actually take control of your health naturally and get to the root cause of your problems, then this may be right for you. Go ahead and click on the link in the description below to apply. Let's go ahead now and dive into how to control inflammation in the body because this is something that's an incredible topic. And one of the things that was going through my mind when I was putting this content together is most people who watch this video will not understand how profound this is to their overall health, what a huge impact this will have if you actually go and utilize this information. So when we look at inflammation, it all starts with the conversation of NF kappa B. This is nuclear factor kappa B. Now this nuclear factor kappa B is a signaling uh, system in the body. It's a signaling pathway which signals inflammation, unfortunately. Now this pathway right here is going to be kicked off, okay, by many different factors. Let's go through, through some of these factors that kick start that pathway which leads to inflammation. Now first it's going to be stress, okay. When we think of stress, stress comes in a lot of ways. So it's pretty vague out there to just throw stress into the mix because stress can come from emotional stress. So let's say if you have like you know bad relationship that kind of thing or it can come from physical stress let's say that you know you're exercising way too hard and you're just being too hard on your body or it can come from chemical stress maybe you're not eating good healthy foods you have a lot of toxins that you're consuming through your diet so stress comes in a lot of ways now the next year is going to be diet okay let's say that you're eating a really unhealthy diet high sugar high carb high processed food not good stuff that can actually kick off this uh, uh, inflammatory signaling pathway chemotherapy the research showed chemotherapy this is actually from a research article these particular topics here chemotherapy actually kicks that on and you can kind of just start to think to yourself well how bad is that you're in fighting an inflammatory disease using an agent that actually kickstarts an inflammatory pathway i know that you guys can figure that one out infection so if somebody gets sick you get the flu you get a bacterial infection something along those lines an infection can kick start it and then addiction is another one that was listed okay now the thing is that's interesting about this is that these particular things kickstart that inflammatory pathway once it turns it on then it leads to a lot of health problems. It leads to a lot of different conditions. And this is the thing that's scary is when you look at so many conditions out there, it all starts with this right here. Okay, let's talk about some of them. Insulin resistance and obesity, okay? So what happens in what we've seen in the research is that this, this inflammatory cascade that is occurring is actually going to drive these problems, okay? And for many people, we think of, oh, well, you know, you're eating too much, that's why you're obese, or your insulin, you have insulin resistance because you consume too much sugar and too many carbs. Well, that's one way of looking at it, but also, let's say from like in an immunologist standpoint, you would look at it from, well, we have an inflammatory problem here. And the research shows that this signaling pathway can actually kickstart this. Now, when you have these people who have all these different symptoms, but yet they're living a pretty healthy lifestyle, this is what it really comes down to is this. Now, chronic pain, asthma, sleep apnea, how many people are suffering from this? Sleep apnea is so interesting because it seems like everybody has this these days, but everybody also has an inflammatory problem. Arthritis is a big one, depression, stroke, migraines, okay, leaky gut, and cholesterol issues. Now, these are all things, all different um, conditions that can be kickstarted by this inflammatory pathway going out of control. And there's many more. I just listed some of them to kind of give you an idea. I mean, we think of all the autoimmune disorders out there that people are facing, thyroid conditions, you name it. So you might think to yourself, okay, well, if we kickstarted it with a couple of these things here, you turn that pathway on, and then maybe once this stuff goes away, right, this pathway will turn off and all of this will go away. That's the idea, right? The diet cleans up, the stress goes away, all of a sudden, the pathways turned off and we should start functioning right and inflammation should just go away well here's what the research shows 
is that even though it was turned on, and even though this particular stuff was removed, it doesn't turn back off. And the reason for that is because this NF kappa B pathway actually has its own amplifying loop, okay? So what that means is once you get into a chronic inflammatory state, then what happens is that it just has this amplifying loop that just keeps making it worse and worse, but it doesn't actually turn off like you would hope that it would. And what the research shows is that you actually need an inhibitor, okay? And we'll get to that in just just a moment. Now, I want to tell you that when I have a patient who comes into my office, let's say that they have a million symptoms, they're on bags of supplements, and then they also are somebody who is eating healthy. It seems like they're doing all the right things, but they got all the problems in the world. It all comes down to this inflammatory pathway needing to be shut down. And you can take all the supplements in the world. You can do all these different things. If you can't shut this pathway down, you can't make the symptoms go away. As a matter of fact, this is a hot topic in the area of pharmacology right now. They're looking for a way to synthetically shut this down. One of the problems is, is that some of the different drugs that they've come up with that have effectively shut down this pathway have shut down the immune system. And then when you shut down the immune system, somebody could just die from the common cold. If they were to get just a minor infection, then they're going to die from it. So they found a way to effectively shut it down, but they also almost like kill people in the meantime. Now, what the research shows is a very, very profound way of actually shutting this down is using curcumin and both resveratrol. In fact, the pharmaceutical system is actually trying to create a synthetic curcumin and a synthetic resveratrol in order to actually shut this pathway down. And let me tell you this, if they actually do accomplish that, they'll probably take the natural nutritional um, components, these particular nutrients off the market so that you can't get a hold of them and you'll have to buy from them. So we have to use this inhibitor to shut this down, okay? Now, when we look at using this inhibitor, like I said, it's curcumin and resveratrol. Those are two very powerful components that the research shows time and time again that shut down this inflammatory cycle in the body. So what do you do here? Now, the thing that gets a little bit complicated about this is that you would have to literally, if, you know, if you're getting capsules of, um, of uh, resveratrol and, and curcumin, you'd literally have to open up capsules and just eat bowls of this stuff in order to get enough that the research actually shows works in order to shut this down. So what we do is we actually use a liquid liposomal form that is like two to six times more active, and that way you're actually absorbing it well. It has all the different extracts in it, so you absorb it well in order to shut this pathway down. When you shut it down, this is when things start getting better. You know, if you're somebody who's on a million different gut supplements and you're on a million different, um, you know, health protocols and you're on a perfect diet and you're exercising, you're doing all the right things, but you have a million symptoms, it all comes back to this NFKB pathway. And the thing is that you have to understand too, from a nutrigenomic standpoint, you can actually be more prone to these inflammatory conditions like I am myself. So I am more prone to having this inflammatory issue. And sometimes you have to focus on shutting it down. And so, like I said, using a uh, liquid form is going to be typically best. And the reason that it works to use a liquid resveratrol in curcumin in order to shut this down is because many people who have this inflammatory issue, they don't absorb this stuff very well into their system. So using a liposomal form and a liquid form is going to be really good. And I'll put a link in the description below to the two that I always have people take simultaneously when they're trying to reverse this inflammatory cascade. Now, I also want to say this too that it's very important to make sure that it's dosed properly. We typically start with about five milliliters of this liquid in order to um, really accomplish this task. And then the thing is that many people will typically ask me from there is like, well, how do I know how much is right for me? Well, a lot of times what we do is if five millimeter, five milliliters shut it down, shut down this inflammatory pathway and start effectively starting to have some of your symptoms reverse, we leave it there. If it is something where you're not getting good results with it, we increase it a little bit. So it all really depends on the individual, but five milliliters is a good place to start with this. So the inflammatory pathway is incredibly important. Like I said, most people who watch this will not understand the implications that this actually has on their health. It's such an important topic today as so many people suffer from autoimmune diseases, cancer, and so many other issues. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, watch this video right here to improve your health. It's very important to make sure that you're reversing chronic inflammation in the body and um, making uh, drastic steps towards uh, reducing that inflammation because it's gonna help you feel better.